Do you want to snag your AWS Solutions Architect cert in just three months and score a 900 plus on the exam? That's what I did. And today I'm going to be showing you how to do the exact same thing. I'll be talking about the only two resources that matter and how to leverage them to pass the exam with flying colors. We'll also talk about test taking strategies that could help you when you actually sit the exam. And as a bonus, I'll be showing you exactly what I was scoring on practice exams leading up to my 913. And honestly, it may surprise you. So let's jump in. Now, starting with the only two resources that matter, I want you to know that these have the AWS exam covered from every side. From understanding all the relevant services to hands-on learning to practice, they've got you covered. The first resource is going to be centered around actually learning the content. And for that, you're going to use Stefan Merrick's Udemy course. Stefan has an amazing handle on what the AWS exam is looking for, and he's able to teach you specifically to that end. He also does a great job giving bite-sized information and pairing it with lessons that are hands-on so you can immediately apply what you've been learning. There are also quizzes at the end of each section to make sure that you're focusing on the right topics and a full-length practice exam at the end of the course. Now, the way I recommend actually using the content is you should watch his lessons at one and a half to two times speed, but make sure you're also doing all of the hands-on exercises on your own to make sure you get the most out of the course. Once you take your first practice exam, you'll have a better understanding of where your knowledge gaps are. And then you can come back to Stefan's course and re-watch the sections that cover the topics where you are weak. You'll be surprised how much more you'll retain the material after refreshing it for a second time. Now, speaking of practice exams, that leads me right into the second resource that you'll need, and that is John Bonzo's practice exams, which you can also pick up on Udemy. Bonzo's exams are designed to give full coverage of the test full material, and they're actually more difficult than the real test. So if you can get through these, you'll definitely be ready on exam day. Now, to get the most out of these exams, my recommendation is to do them in an environment that is as close to test day as possible. So try to do them under the time limit and all in one go. Now the real value comes from the amazing test reviews provided. So make sure you're reading all the explanations, even for the questions that you got right. Now also note that the AWS exam loves to test your knowledge by giving only a slight variance between right and wrong answers. But you can be ready for this by studying why wrong answers are wrong. And Bonso's exams do a great job of explaining this, so make sure you're taking advantage of that amazing feature. Now you should use the first practice exam to understand your knowledge gaps and then go rewatch those lectures in Stefan's course on 2x speed. After you've done that, it's time to prioritize recognition over recall. The test is multiple choice, and Bonzo's exams have such great coverage that it's likely that you'll recognize nearly every question on exam day if you've seen Bonzo's test enough. So just take his test repeatedly until you can score above a 90% on each one. On your first pass, do your full review, but on retakes, you can make it a lot quicker by just focusing on areas that still gave you trouble. And while you're doing your retakes, try to answer the question of why this answer choice is correct. This will help with your encoding and give you a lot more confidence of the material. Now we're about to take a look at the actual scores I was getting on practice exams, but before we do that, if you found any value of this video so far, please drop me a like and consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out a lot to continue to bring content just like this. Now with that being said, let's look at my practice exam scores so that you don't have to freak out if you're bombing tests in practice. All right, so here are the scores from my first crack at these exams. And as you can see, I absolutely got destroyed by my first practice exam, getting only a 56%. And honestly, that was with a ton of correct guessing. Yeah, I know, pretty horrible. I then went back and reviewed the material I was weak on and proceeded with the other five exams. You can see that most of these I am still barely passing. So if you're doing the same, don't worry, just review them properly and retake them. Here are the exams for my second pass. As you can probably tell, I was a lot more comfortable with the material, but I was making sure to answer the question of why in my head as I took them. I was able to pass the 90% threshold for all of these, and I was feeling a lot more confident for the actual exam. It's honestly kind of funny that I was barely passing any new practice exams, but on exam day, 
I was armed with nearly 400 questions under my belt from these practice tests. And so it really felt like I had seen the entire exam before and it was easy to crush it at that point. Now, those are the only two resources that matter. My goal is to make your studying as efficient as possible. So to that end, I'll quickly touch on some other resources that I tried and you may be considering. But the point here is that I tried them so you don't have to. Now, I also went through Adrian Cantrell's course and you may have heard of that one. It was actually pretty good, but the point is that Savant's was just so much more streamlined that it really should have been the only learning source that I used for content. As far as practice exams, I also tried Neil Davis's practice tests, but found they were severely lacking in explanation compared to Bonzo's. Oh, and I sprung for the official AWS practice exam. Please do not do this. It was honestly a waste of time and money, and Bonzo's exams were much more in line with the actual test, and I should have completely skipped this step. But that wraps up all you need to know about resources, so let's talk about some test taking strategies that will definitely help you out on exam day. So you have your choice of two high level approaches that you can take based on how your practice went. If you found that time was a big issue for you in your practice exams, then on exam day, you're gonna actually want to blaze through your first pass of the exam. Mark questions that you're unsure on, but still answer them. Make sure you don't leave anything blank. And the reason you wanna go so fast is that you don't wanna leave any easy questions on the table. It's totally possible that the last 10 questions could be very easy for you and make the difference between passing and not. Once you've completed your first pass as fast as possible, go through all of your marked questions and don't be afraid to change your answers as you're reading questions more carefully and deliberately. You should probably trust yourself more on this pass than your first pass. Now, if time wasn't an issue for you in practice, I'll actually suggest a different strategy, and this is actually the strategy that I use on test day, and that is to take a slower first pass, read questions more carefully, and look out for gotchas. Still mark questions you're unsure on and leave no question unanswered. And when it comes time to review these questions, still don't be afraid to change your answers, but take into account exam fatigue. If I'm stuck between two answer choices, I've often found that my initial instincts were correct if I did a slower pass the first time around. So don't be afraid to lean back on your initial instinct. Now in both strategies, you're going to want to review every single question on the exam if time permits, but it's definitely not as important as answering every question in the first place and slowly reviewing your marked questions. And my final piece of advice is to lean into your knee jerk answers. Since we're able to recognize nearly 400 questions from our practice with the John Bonzo test, we'll often get a feeling of what the correct answer could be. And I have found that more often than not, this feeling is correct. Now still make sure that you read the question carefully and look out for tricks, but if you're stuck on a question, it's okay to lean into this knee jerk response. All right, so that's all you need to know to score a 900 plus on your exam in a short amount of time. It might still be difficult, but if you work hard at it, I'm confident that you will be successful. Now that's it for me, but remember, we'll all make it together. Just gotta keep praying.